Good evening. My name is Brandi Stewart. I have the pleasure of serving as the Executive Senior Associate Athletics Director and Senior Woman Administrator here for Texas Tech Athletics. I would like to thank you for joining us for the sixth installment of our Hidden Figure series in recognition of Women, Women's History Month. Uh, and it's sponsored by the Texas Tech Red Raider Way, our diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging initiative. I am so happy to be sitting here in this space with this lovely panel of folks. Uh, why don't we let the people know who is at the table with us today by way of introduction. Um, we will start here to my right, and then we'll move our way around the table, and then we'll hop into the conversation. All right, very good. Well, I am Kay McDowell. I'm the first uh, female CEO of the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and uh, I spent 20 plus years in Nashville, Tennessee, and we relocated to the Lubbock area a couple of years ago. And a fun fact about myself is I have three boys. Oh, very nice. Thank yes. you, Kay. Uh, Steve Maines, I'm Assistant Athletic Director for Event Operations here at Texas Tech Athletics. Uh, born and raised here in Lubbock. Uh, probably one fun fact is I think I'm the oldest person in the athletic department. Oh. So, yeah, Love so I carry a lot of history with me. Yes, you do, <laughs> but you share it, which is great. Thank you, Steve. And hello, I am Dee Dee Brown Campbell, and I serve as the uh, Senior Associate Athletics Director over Academic Excellence. Um, haven't been here quite a year yet, and i um, here in Lubbock, loving it. And I'm originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, and um, have been in athletic administration for a multitude of years. Thanks, Stevie. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, let's go ahead and just kick it off with the, mm -hmm. the subject at hand. Um, what does Women's History Month mean to you? Why is it important for you to be here tonight to share your insights and have this conversation? Well, it, it's important to me because I think celebrating is always the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And as we look back and see all the wonderful accomplishments of the women that came before us, it really inspires us of what can be possible and what we can do in the future. Yeah, thanks, Kay. I'd, I'd add on to that. I mean, just thinking about the many different opportunities to celebrate not just women history, right. month, but any and everything. So I think that women have come a long way uh, in athletics, in multiple different industries, and we should celebrate that. And we should give people like my daughter an opportunity to Absolutely. see where women have come from and, and give them a platform to do, do more and be better than we are today. Thanks, Stevie. I'm honored to be here, <laughs> being the only uh, man on the panel. Uh, but my whole life has been uh, enhanced and I am who I am today because of the women in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with my, my mother, who was an amazing mom, my wife of 48 years, who's kind of helped mold me in who I am today, uh, father of three daughters, mm -hmm. uh, grandfather of four granddaughters, wow. also have one grandson, <laughs> but uh, just uh, <clears throat> the fact that my life is, is what it is because of the women that have made uh, such an impression on, mm -hmm. on who I am today. Yeah, thank you. And I would agree with all of those things, right? It's, it's representation. Um, the older I get, the more important history is to me and to the stories we tell and to the lessons that we learn so that we can continue to grow as a society, um, you know, within our families, within our communities and, and just really creating new narratives, right? And so history repeating itself is something that we would like to avoid, but you can't avoid those spaces if you don't know where you came from and why it's important for us to continue to move forward um, and maybe even negate some of the narratives of like, oh no, we, we're great. You should see where we were before. Well, yeah, but look at how long of a span that yeah, was right. um, until we continue to evolve. And so, you know, Steve, you mentioned that you were the only man on the panel. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> and your invitation was intentional um, based on the work that you do, how you show up every day, the kind of teammate that you are within the athletic department. Can you start us off with talking a little bit about the importance of uh, male serving as champions for women in the workplace, in the community, in spaces and places where they may not have access? Again, that's just, I've, I've tried to do that my whole life. And to, again, being a father of three, I was always their champion. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be in school, whether it be in their athletics, you know, as they uh, graduated from Texas Tech, they're all tech alum and setting out on their careers and doing what they're doing today. They're all very, very successful uh, women, moms. And, uh, and again, and my wife is, uh, she's self-employed. She's been in business for over 45 years mm -hmm. and I'm her biggest cheerleader in, in 
supporting her, but also having the opportunity to work with, with amazing women within the athletic department and, and, and having the opportunity to work with younger women coming in to work in event operations. I, we have a great team mm -hmm. and just working to help empower them mm -hmm. to understand uh, the importance of what they're doing uh, in our events, uh, uh, in our area of, of work. But j again, just supporting, trying to be a good leader and like I said, just showing up every day and, and trying to make good things happen. Yeah, thank you, Steve. And, and ladies, um, any experiences that you've had with males who have served as champions for you? I'll tell you, my, my, I love to tell the story because it's about my dad. Mm. And when I was younger and I was little and I was beginning to kind of think about careers, you know, I would go to my dad and I would say, Dad, you know, I think I want to be a, a nurse. And he would say, why don't you be a doctor? Mm -hmm. and, and, every, awesome. and I was kind of beginning to live into the narrative of women, certain jobs are for women, mm -hmm. you know, in that day. And, and as I began to explore what those jobs that I was hearing were, my dad was very clear about redirecting me to say, you know, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. don't, don't let what you know, society is telling you is the norm for a, a female job, a woman job. You, know, mm -hmm. you can be anything. Mm -hmm. And that began, and it was such a gentle way of telling me that. Mm -hmm. And I think, I tell my dad all the time, Dad, he's 85 years old. And I said, Dad, you are ahead of your time, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's a, I, that's my beautiful story. I love that. Tell that's, about my dad. That's powerful. Thank you, Kay. Similar story with my father. <clears throat> and then I was going to add, um, I have three brothers. Oh, wow. So they, they played a similar role mm -hmm. where, you know, there was no exception. Like, you can do just as much as we can do. Yeah. You're expected <laughs> to be pushed to the edge mm -hmm. and we're not going to make an exception for you because you're a woman. Like, right. because you're, you know, you're a female. And so they definitely have played a role in making sure that, you know, you're pushed, you're supported the expectation is the same no matter right. what because you're capable and you're going to get the same opportunities That's so awesome. yeah those yeah. men and i think the key key word there is supported mm -hmm. yes. i mean we can we can direct all day long but unless we provide the support mm -hmm. uh, for for those individuals then we haven't done our job yeah and you know i am um, i think of two things as i hear you all um, with you with your stories one is personal and, and one is professional and, and the personal story is what also empowered me growing up, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a two parent household and mm -hmm. my parents had known each other since they were in high school, but there were no gender roles in our mm -hmm. home. And my dad washed dishes and he, <laughs> he made his attempts to cook. And you know, he did our hair, I have a sister, mm -hmm. he did our hair if my mom had to go to work. And mm -hmm. so that's empowering in and of itself, mm -hmm. right? And that there was no enforcement of gender right. roles and mm -hmm. the things that you should do and what men should do and right. what women should look like. And, and so that was incredibly powerful and that poured into sports. My dad was my coach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I had a lot of men who were our coaches as we were growing up, but they were coaching their daughters. And so they were empowering us to be strong, to be competitive, um, to show up, right? right? And to win, and that's okay. There's strength in that, and that's yeah. not intimidating um, mm -hmm. to them or to other people, but you always shine your light. Right. And and that carried with me throughout my time as a student athlete. And then as I worked, I, I, I gravitated towards other leaders in my professional spaces who also carried that with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, it's just incredibly important of how we carry those things with us into our everyday. And that's what, that's how I was brought up. I was the second of four boys. Mm. We were each supposed to be a girl. And, yeah, and, uh, and finally, after four boys, my parents did have uh, my sister. But, but we all uh, were going to be named that one name that our sister finally got. Uh, but yeah, we grew up, I mean, learning how to iron, yeah. washing dishes, uh, learning how to cook, learning how to clean, vacuum. And I continue to do that today. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, it is not gender, you know, uh, driven. It's more about getting the job done as, yeah. a, as, a, as a team and a unit. Yeah. Just it's it's so it's crazy, right? And and we sit here in the midst of celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Mm -hmm. And I've had talks with different classes and different folks about um, what that means and the power of Title IX and the access that it's provided. So I want to hear from y'all. What has Title IX and gender equity and and the the strides that we've made, the policies that have been put in place? 
how, how has that impacted who you are, um, how you've been able to show up, and then how you pass on that history to others that come behind you to understand it wasn't always like this. Right, right. I can go ahead and get started. Yeah. yeah I mean, I thought about that recently on a, on a couple of committees where we're, we're, you know, we're trying to make sure that people are aware of that. But just personally, thinking about how Title IX has given me an opportunity to do what I love, mm. Um, not just as I was growing up and not as while I was just in college, but now mm -hmm. getting an opportunity to work in college athletics and and continue the good work to provide opportunities for, for women, mm -hmm. for, for not just women that are athletes, but for what's next. Because mm -hmm. for college and for, for some of our student athletes, this is a platform for what's next and it's not gonna be in their sport necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a platform to make sure that they know that you know they are capable that they are going to be prepared and that they are they are definitely going to go out and impact the world and have an opportunity to further what has happened in the past mm -hmm. and so i think back i will st share the story about my father and i was super competitive all of my life in a lot of different sports and my father would would i mean he there was no sport that he said don't try you try this you do that i will follow you across the the nation i will follow you across the world for you to do this and Beyond the sport, it's the experience, mm -hmm. it's the opportunity to meet people, it's the opportunity to travel, it's just the opportunities that mm -hmm. come out of it that are beyond the actual act of athletics that I am so grateful for, for the opportunity that Title IX has not just afforded me, but will afford my daughter, mm -hmm. and will afford her daughter. Um, and I know it's sometimes it feels like it's been a slow climb, um, but I think that if we just continue to push and continue to climb, we're gonna get where we need to be. Yeah, thank you, Didi. You had something. Well, else? and really, I think as far as Title IX goes, you know, I look more in the professional world, mm -hmm. and and I just think of the young women that have benefited from that, yeah. uh, and how they now are soaring professionally because mm -hmm. of that experience. Yeah. So I think it goes well beyond college into oh, career. Absolutely. Sure. Thank sure. you, Steve. Yeah. Again, you know, growing up in a small school. Uh, my friends who were females, they really had the same opportunities pretty much that I had as, as a male athlete in high school because we were small and we, you know, mm -hmm. it, they, they played basketball, they played tennis, they played volleyball, things of that nature. And so I didn't think much about other females maybe not having those opportunities. But my wife is from the Dallas area, so she grew up in the larger school where that really wasn't afforded mm -hmm. to the females. So she was a cheerleader, which was awesome. But then as, our, as we had our three daughters and just those opportunities uh, started coming forward because of Title IX, and as a result, they played sports throughout um, you know, high school. Our oldest daughter played junior college basketball, but then she's been in athletics for over 25 years now. Mm -hmm. And so because of Title IX, those opportunities presented those you know, presented themselves to her and she has excelled in doing what she, she does. And so, yeah, so it's, it's affected our family directly. Really yeah, well. yeah, it's, you know, opportunity um, leads to access, right? Mm -hmm. And access leads to growth mindset, just opening up your perspectives and just seeing all things that you can be, right? And opening the space for representation. So I wanna talk a little bit about this idea of access. So for DD and K, what, how you've navigated to gain access, different ways that you have maybe um, veered around some barricades or roadblocks that you've seen or encountered in order to, to get to that space. And then Steve, just from your perspective, assuming that you have been in spaces and places, how have you opened lanes for people to be able to have women in particular, to have access into spaces that um, stereotypically or theoretically they may not have had previously. So um, whoever would like to start there and just your term, your experience with access. Yeah, um, I think it's really important to point out to what Steve said before, men championing what a, pay, a path for women is important too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I've used that opportunity to befriend, to use mentors. I don't, I know it's really important for women to have women mentors. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important. I think it's also important for us to learn from other people mm -hmm. that are not like us, that don't have the same challenges as us, uh, so that you can learn different things from them. So I think that's really important is, is making sure that you have uh, um, 
an abundance of people who have abundance of experience that can help you take that next step. So that's definitely one thing that I think is really important. Um, and then having confidence, having confidence, which I think is built over time, which mm -hmm. speaks to what Title IX has done over the last 50 years, mm -hmm. having confidence from, from being exposed and having opportunities and being willing to take that step and to push yourself and for others to push you and hold you accountable for mm -hmm. doing what you know you're capable to do and doing what others know you're capable to do. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, you know, I would really agree with that. And I think a lot about, um, you know, what what voice do we listen to? You mm -hmm. know, oftentimes I think women are like, oh, I can't do that. You know, you know, it's interesting when, when a male is suggested to go for a new job, he's like, I was like, well, of course, you know, I, you know they, they call it kind of peacock, you know, they're kind of like, <laughs> well, of course, and, and we as women will go, I don't know, do I have enough experience for that? I, I know, why would they ask me to do that? Are you sure I can do that? You know, you know, and I think just, again, having that confidence and listening to the voice of truth, mm -hmm. living into your truth, mm -hmm. I think will help break down barriers. And then mentors, I had some amazing mentors, male and female, that right. have broken down barriers for me and given me access. Yeah, I'm thank incredibly you. blessed. Thanks, Kay. You know, uh, so prior to coming to athletics, I worked uh, 28 years for the State Attorney General's office. Uh, regional administrator for the Child Support Enforcement Program. And again, I was fortunate enough to, I would say probably over those 28 years, probably 80% of my staff were females. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you know, again, a little bit more on the social work side of, of the spectrum. But I mean, I look for people who could do the job. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if they're women, then that's even better because mm -hmm. I, I, I want to champion, I, again, because I'm a father of three daughters. <laughs> and so that's a, always kind of been out there, you know, that yes, you, you can do it. And then and if whatever I can do to help, help you grow uh, in your position, uh, that's what we do. Yeah. And you know, I've, uh, when I think about access to, um, to, to points that have been made, there's some strategery, right? Like you've got to play chess instead of playing checkers. Mm -hmm. Who do I need to know? Right. How can I get myself, myself, my skill sets in front of the right people? Um, but also who you're surrounding yourself with, who are you sharing your experiences with? And I think that that's really important as well as just a, a level of vulnerability to be able to find people that you trust and just share some of your frustrations, mm -hmm. share some of your experiences. If you have met some roadblocks along the way, um, I have found that, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. And so mm -hmm. when I when I've had mentors around and I'll say, you know, I just I'm having a really tough time with this person mm -hmm. or I'm having a really tough time kind of breaking into this space mm -hmm. and having them either be able to share with me like, OK, so here are some tidbits or, oh, well, let me introduce you to somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me help you meet the people that you need to know to help you go ahead and walk around that mm -hmm. barricade and get into that space. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of takes me into, you know, this idea of when I think of Women's History Month, there are a lot of different components of life that I think about. One of them um, is just this idea of equity and equality and um, there being this perceived fear of scarcity of, oh, well, if we if we let women in, then then you're taking experiences away from men. Um, I was doing a, a training with a major league baseball organization recently and, you know, in baseball and the sport, there has more recently been a wave of females who have been invited and included into organizations in front office spaces or um, in spaces of, of strength and conditioning, coaching, um, health and wellness. And one of the questions that we ask is, you know, should females expect to hear locker room talk? Should females expect to have to conform to the spaces that they're in if they're male dominated? And, you know, it makes me think of like, okay, how far we've come, but how much further we have to go. Yeah. So when we talk about expectations for women, when we talk about expecting to be treated equitably or equally, how does that sit with you? What do you think about when you think about what women's expectations should be um, and, and what our realities are? Well, you know, I always expect them to be treated equally. I don't, I know, that's just kind of, I, I guess the, I want, I want everybody to go in with that expectation. But also, because I feel like if you just walk in and command the space, mm -hmm. 
they they yield the floor to you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about caring. You know, don't don't assume they're not going. to, You know, just assume they're you're going to take it, mm-hmm. and you're going to be experienced enough, wise enough, smart enough, good enough mm-hmm. to take the room and to do what you need to do to be treated equitably. Yeah. yeah. So I, th- I think uh, I couldn't say that any better. I'm just expecting that, demanding that. Yeah. And and when someone is not doing that, I think it's only fair to bring it to their attention Mm -hmm. and give them the opportunity to, you know, maybe recognize something they didn't realize they were doing or saying Mm or um, or or that they weren't, you know, just paying attention to. So I think that's fair. We have to give people the benefit of the doubt. And then we also just have to call it what it is. Mm -hmm. And and that's a learning opportunity, I think, even beyond um, just this topic itself. It's like. If, if we don't bring it to someone's attention, we just have to assume that they don't know. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when we bring it to their attention, we help them problem solve. You know, one thing that I like to think about too is, I am different than a man. Mm-hmm. And I have some unique opportunities that men don't have. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm more empathetic. I, you know, there mm-hmm. are a whole list of things I think women bring to the table mm-hmm. that really add to yes. the workspace. Yeah, so. that's important. That, uh, that's perfect. We talk about equity, we talk about inclusion, we talk about diversity mm-hmm. and having multiple perspectives. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're right, selling, making sure that people recognize I don't need to be treated differently, but I can bring a unique perspective on top of, mm-hmm. you know, just the general idea right. of what um, whatever whatever the discussions about so great yeah. point yeah and on the flip side of that is men they need the same thing yeah mm-hmm. they you know uh, I think our again my role is to be there to support and lead and direct uh, individuals from the teaching side of things but whether, whether they're male or female mm-hmm. and so uh, I, so I think it's an opportunity for growth and just as a leader, having the awareness of what individuals may need right. yeah. to get them to that point where they, they have the level of confidence and not arrogance, but confidence to go in and do what they need to do and be effective. Well, and, and to that point, right? Like there's gotta be the sense of awareness that you've, you're you bringing people into spaces, regardless of the diversity that they bring to the table. How are you amplifying or creating spaces for their voices to be valued? How are you showing up for folks to, to allow for people to know that you know, she's, she's got a point too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and not just from a mom's perspective or, you know, I, I remember um, when I found out I was pregnant and I was one of only in the room of executive staff members at, at the institution where I was working. And I remember talking to my family and the first thing I, w- I thought about was, now they're gonna see me as a woman. And my family was like, what do you think they see you as now? <laughs> and you know, I said, no, I mean, obviously they know that I'm a, I'm a female, but I was one of the guys, right? Like I was mm-hmm. one of the people. Mm-hmm. I could navigate in the spaces. <laughs> I could go have the extra drinks after work. I could pick up and, and, and play golf or, or go do whatever it yeah. was without pause. Right. Because I had worked myself into a space where we were all very comfortable with each other and we could just kind of have those moments. And then yeah. I thought, well, geez, now they're not gonna invite me to go have drinks anymore because I can't drink for the next 10 months. They're not <laughs> going, you know? And so really trying to reconcile that, but not apologize for it. Right. That, and remind people like, I'm still me. Mm-hmm. And yes, I'm growing a human, mm-hmm. but I can still contribute. Yeah. Like I'll hang out, but I just will have a seltzer yeah. instead of having a, an adult beverage. And so, you know, just being able to understand that we can be all things in all spaces mm-hmm. and still show up and contribute, right. Right? right? Without falling into a stereotypical category. Yeah. Um, so another thing that I'd like to just ask you all is to share just some of your points of success. What are some things that you would share with young men, young women who are watching this panel tonight um, and trying to gain some insight on how they can navigate paths to success? What does that look like for you as females navigating in your spaces? And then Steve, from your perspective, um, navigating in an inclusive and intentional way for folks? Mm -hmm. 
Again, I think it goes back to you know what, what you know, living into the voice of truth, mm-hmm. and and not limiting yourself, and and also, but really sharpening your saw, being really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, really doing the training, doing the hard work. You know, paying the dues that you got to pay early on. You know, doing all the things, and and really putting the time in to be really, really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. And and I find excellence surpasses everything. Mm. You know. Yep. That's where I was. I was. I was going to use the term, do your research, right. be willing to put in the extra work mm-hmm. and then have the confidence based on what you've learned and all the work that you've done at whatever level you're starting at and have that will build your confidence to go after whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And, and that that's really important, I think, to point out is that as women, sometimes you do have to do more work or you have to do more research or you have to figure out a few more things, dig a little bit more because there might be opportunities that you didn't take advantage of or maybe you weren't exposed to when you were younger. And mm-hmm. so this is your opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'd say do your research, do, do, you know, do extra work, and then that will build your confidence for what's next. Yeah, thank you. I think just being prepared to meet the challenge, and that goes back into the preparation part, but also realizing and recognizing there may be failure, failures along the way. Mm-hmm. For sure. And that doesn't mean that you stop. Mm -hmm. That just means that you grow and you learn from Mm -hmm. whatever you just did that didn't work and you you change, uh, you may change course. And the other thing that that I always, I like to tell folks that, you know, you can can have a course that you're following and then all of a sudden you decide, you know, this isn't for Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, regroup, saddle back up and maybe ride a different direction and, 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 and make it work. But, but I think just, you know, again, just being willing to take risk. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, that's where the support piece comes in. Mm-hmm. Because when you do maybe not reach the goal that you thought that you were going to reach, uh, that you, again, you, we always, t- you know, look at, you know, having them weigh the pros and cons, you know, and then during their decision making and, and then going with it and, you know, not, don't spend all your time looking for that perfect answer, yeah. mm-hmm. just go with the answer and then work to make that the right right decision. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, just, I don't know. You, you brought up another, the phrase again that I, I wanted to circle back to, and that's this idea of support. And I think of women in professional spaces um, who need support and who need some validation, right? Mm-hmm. And certification that know you belong. You're not just here because you're a woman right. and we're checking a box. You're not here just because you fit a status quo or a need for us to be able to move forward um, publicly and, and for perspective and, and optics. So, you know, it's so important though, as you navigate as a young female coming up in, into professional spaces, how to find your voice. We talk about confidence, we talk about doing research, we talk about showing up and doing the work and, and preparing, but, but what would you tell young women who are watching this about how to, how to go on that journey to find your voice? I was, I was probably yeah. in my mid thirties when I found um, my operable voice, right? Like the voice that could get me through yeah. spaces. It's probably a little more diplomatic. Yeah. So I'm no sure one. you had that a voice was, other than that. Right? That was pretty straightforward. And you found um, it. I'm yeah, so certain. Yeah, you know, um, my sister is a lawyer, so she would say, well, let's be a little more diplomatic. What do you want to say? And then let's figure out how you yeah. actually yeah. say it. So, you know, what would you, what kind of tidbits would you share with, with people, women, young, or, you know, more seasoned, um, who are still trying to figure out how to find their voice so that they can feel heard and that they can feel valued. Um, and then I'd add on to everybody on the panel as we've experienced uh, champions and allies in spaces, what would you say to others in the room to help give space and create opportunities for those women to feel seen? What can they do too? So twofold question, one, what advice would you give as people are on their journey to find their voice? And then two, how can we encourage people that are already in that space to help uplift, empower, and create a safe space for them to express that voice? That's, ooh, that's tough. Yeah. Um, I think it takes me automatically back to the mentor piece mm-hmm. and finding, and it doesn't have to be a mentor that's in your area of interest. It could be someone that you trust, mm-hmm. someone that you look up to who's doing something like what you want to do 
and being vulnerable with them and saying, mm -hmm. this is what I'm thinking, or you know, how, what do you suggest? Did I do this the right way? Steve hit on a couple points too, like you're gonna fail, you're gonna mm -hmm. make some wrong comments, you're right. gonna right. pick the right time to comment, you're gonna pick the wrong time <laughs> to comment, you're gonna say the wrong thing, mm -hmm. uh, but use those as learning opportunities and, mm -hmm. and ask for feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, how else could I have navigated that conversation so that I, it could have been more impactful? Mm -hmm. What should I do next time? And, and I think that's really important. It's fine. And I'm like you, Brandy, I mean, it was probably about five or six years ago when I really, and I talk about confidence, but mine is fairly new. Mm -hmm. I mean, I found where I'm like, I need to speak up and share my thoughts, share my opinions. They are valued. Mm -hmm. And now they might not make a decision, you know, make a yes or a no, but they need to be heard mm -hmm. because it's validated. I know I speak for a large group, uh, a large population. And, and if I don't speak up, who will? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, and I think self-awareness Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that's hard and and, uh, and it's hard sometimes to face, you know, when you know that you yeah. kind of mess something up and you're like, oh, I don't want to think about that. But mm -hmm. but really being self-aware and and really learning from that mm -hmm. and, and being open when and, and when somebody wants to have a courageous conversation with you, mm -hmm. you know, being open to hearing what they have to say. Yeah. But also, I think being open to having courageous conversations with other females in mm -hmm. our space mm -hmm. because sometimes we just don't do each other any favors by just kind of going oh bless your heart you know right. <laughs> <laughs> you should learn you know you yeah. know we have to go to yeah. each other and say hey yeah, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. you know, I want you to do great things. Mm -hmm. And I learned a long time ago that, you know, yeah. whatever it is. And, and you know, being, but being able to receive, but also give. Yeah. I think. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing that they, we are probably all need to realize is not everyone's going to hear our voice. Right. Yeah. That's right. And, that's right. And, and, and that's okay. Yes. yes. But, but you, the voice is still valuable. And what yeah. you're saying is still, worthy of what's being said, but just realizing that not everybody's gonna agree with you, which is fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, work and and maybe, again, maybe say it a different way. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing on the whole ally part of it too, is realizing that maybe putting your efforts or not spending so much time on trying to get somebody to understand who you are mm -hmm. as much as accepting who you are. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I think that uh, will go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's Ooh, okay. I, like that. um, I know I should be taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking mental notes, but I'm, I work close to Steve, so I'll just pop into his office. <laughs> and say, what, what did you say? <laughs> um, so, you know, as we near the end of our conversation today, which I have really thoroughly enjoyed, thank Me you all. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of storytelling. So I'm, I would like to give each of you an opportunity to share with the group and the people that are watching this um, series. Tell us about the one of the women who has helped you become who you are today. I believe that we are all standing on the shoulders of the people who have come before us. Um, tell us a little bit about one of those women who is, is that for you? Well, for me, it's a woman by the name of Letitia Hoskins. And she came to me very early in my career. Uh, I was, um, just embarking on my journey and I got to know her and she was just fascinating to me because she had lived in New York City, had gone to the very best of all the elite elite schools and had had a mega career in PR, in public relations in New York, which is where you wanna be if you're in that field. Mm -hmm. And I found her in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And and she began to teach me, first of all, about my profession. Mm -hmm. She taught me about media relations and all the facts you need to know about PR. Mm -hmm. But then she also began to teach me about life. Mm -hmm. And she taught me about making decisions. Mm -hmm. And for her, she'd made a big decision to leave New York City. And she decided that she was very empty and she found God. And when she found God, she then realized she had to get out of New York City. And so then she began searching for where, where are a lot of people that love God? Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> and she found this, this community in Nashville, Tennessee. And so she left her career and, and moved to, New, to Nashville. 
and didn't know that she'd have a career from, at that point. She didn't know where she was going. She didn't know anything about Nashville. She stumbled, and luckily a large PR, the second largest PR firm in the Southeast picked her up, hired her, and that's where I got to know her. Mm, awesome. And so she taught me a lot about life and about, you know, don't be afraid of risk. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. Feel, make sure you're full and you're full of the right things. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's my role model. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna get real mushy on you guys. Okay. And, and uh, I'm glad you said one of the women because I, when I thought about that question, when we heard that could be a possible topic, uh, I, could, I couldn't narrow it down. Mm -hmm. and, and I could name about 10 different women. And as I think back, I'm like, wow, I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had an opportunity to really be exposed to a lot of strong women. and. Um, but I would highlight today my grandmother, mm -hmm. my grandmother. She's no longer with us, but my grandmother grew up in a very small town in southwest Arkansas. I mean, a small community. Um, and we would go to the country. That's what we call it, the country. Mm -hmm. um, Horatio, Arkansas, if anybody's familiar with that, every summer. And my grandmother was a teacher, a school teacher. Uh, she had four kids, a multitude of us grandkids. And just the small lessons that I learned every summer with her. And they mm -hmm. weren't about, you know, you need to do this, this, and this. They were life lessons mm -hmm. that taught me about perseverance. Mm -hmm. They taught me about, you know, when you start something, you finish something, right. no matter what that task is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about snap peas mm -hmm. and clean up, <laughs> like all of that. Yeah. Um, and she also taught me about the simple things in life that make you happy, which, is, mm -hmm. It's my family and it's the opportunity to spend time with people that you love. And um, in her later years, she became really philanthropic and, and gave back a lot more than I think she even realized she did. Mm -hmm. So um, so she just taught a lot of lessons that weren't even specific to, I think, the path that I thought I was going to take or that I ended up taking, but just really built that foundation on you as a person. You are strong. You are worth it you can do it and mm -hmm. and that was it it didn't matter what it was it didn't and that was the same message that she taught my brothers mm -hmm. uh she taught me the same thing but i do feel like she sometimes pushed me a little more because she knew what was to come mm -hmm. she knew i'd have a few more challenges and and i'm, I'm just thankful for her oh yes awesome. yeah thank you <laughs> Gosh, see, I was gonna name about forty people. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, because I don't want to—I don't want to shortchange anybody yeah, because right. I have had so many. I mean, just thinking back, my first grade teacher, my second grade teacher—they mm -hmm. were all female—and just how they allowed me to grow and be me. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's a—it's to think back again. This is back in the day, but you know, just learn, starting to learn leadership uh, yeah. skills when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, working my way up through high school and then college. But I think probably the fact, I'm talking about mushy, but <laughs> the fact that I've been married for 48 years mm -hmm. to the same mm -hmm. woman and awesome. how she's embedded the, you know, the, you can do this and, you know, you're, you're, you're good at what you do and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, so my wife Debbie is, who's probably my, the person that I stand on more often than not. Oh, you're gonna make me cry, yes. Those are goals, goals. Um, which means I'll probably be 100 by the time I get to 40 years. <laughs> um, thank you all for sharing that. And and like you all, I, there's a lot of different folks that I could name. Um, my mom will probably kill me if she watches this and I don't name her, but she knows I love her. Um, <laughs> and I'm the reason I am who I am today. But I, I think for me professionally, um, Again, going back to representation mattering, mm -hmm. mattering, matter, representation matters. <laughs> it's important. Um, Carla Williams, who is the athletic director at the University of Virginia, she was actually at Florida State when I was a student athlete. Um, and then I had just kind of followed her career mm -hmm. from afar uh, mm -hmm. throughout um, her time and, and me growing in this industry. Um, but what she has, always been for me at a distance and then here recently become a true mentor of mine is she has always been true to herself. Mm -hmm. She is a woman of color who has commanded so much respect um, in our field as she has grown um, throughout her career and her professional journey. 
But I think, not what I think I know that I take from her is she has always been true to who and what she is. When she became a mother, she, she was a mom. I would see her walking around different athletic events as we would travel from place to place and she'd walk around with her children. Mm -hmm. And for me, I thought, okay, so you can be both, right? Mm -hmm. You can, well, you can be all, you can be a wife and you are and a mother or a partner. Um, and, and you can be an administrator and one that is well-respected and highly regarded. Um, and when she became the athletic director at the University of Virginia, um, and one of the first, one of the few um, female athletic directors in Division One, and if not the first, one of the, the first uh, black female athletic directors in the Power Five, you know, again, it, there's this sentiment of, okay, so you don't have to conform. You don't have to compromise. You can show up yeah. and do what you need to do for yourself, your family, your institution, and lead in truth, and people will accept you for that. And that's empowering every day, right? It's a reminder of in the moments when you think, oh, I just, I don't know where my path is gonna right. take me. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. I'm gonna be able to break through. And you look back and you see the people who've done it. Yeah. And you're reminded of it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. And, and you find out that you need to be that for someone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes you stronger and it makes you persevere and it makes yes. you navigate the conversations and take that extra step when you're tired and when you're That's frustrated. Right. You you put yourself in those shoes of that person that was in front of you. Yes. And it makes you want to keep going. That's right. It does. We've got to leave legacies, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to leave breadcrumbs for the people that have come behind us. But we also need to give each other permission to be able to empower one another to be who we are because we will rise together mm -hmm. will. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And there's strength in diversity Absolutely. and there's strength in differences of opinions. Yes. And so I just, you know, I appreciate all of you um, for being here with us tonight. And I'll just, I'll leave it to this. Is there anything else that you all would like to leave our viewers with on our topic of, you know, celebrating Women's History Month and, and women in general, anything last comments that you would like to share? I just think it's awesome that we're, we're taking the time to highlight this mm -hmm. in addition to, you know, the other things that we're gonna highlight. Diversity is important, um, equity is important, inclusion is important. And this is just an awesome opportunity to start highlighting the things that make all of us uniquely awesome and collectively awesome. Mm. So, thanks, I would just say that whenever uh, Brandy came into our department, one of the first things that I learned from her, we had a conversation, it might have even been something we were doing on Zoom, but it came out that the world was run by those who show up. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it down, immediately texted that to my two oldest granddaughters. Mm -hmm. And so we, yeah, show up, make yeah. it happen. Thank you. Well, and I appreciate this from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking about you know women in business today, and and I'm proud of love it because you know we are voted one of the best places for female entrepreneurs by oh, magazine. That's awesome. And so there's a big opportunity here in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited that Texas Tech is leading the way. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you for having us. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, give a shout out to our athletic director who has continued to open the path and open the way. I mean, Kirby Hokut is a leader in, in all that he does and truly genuine in his leadership and his authenticity of wanting to create spaces like this for us That's to be awesome. able to share with people um, across the country and whoever else would like to watch across the world, we don't know. Um, <laughs> but I, I just really want to genuinely thank all of you for being here today and sharing your, your pearls of wisdom. Uh, and we'll just have to do this again at some point. I'm sure that this will get picked up yeah. and syndicated, and That's so we'll right. be back again. Yes. But thank you all for your time, <laughs> and, and thank you for the opportunity to have the conversation. Thank you. Thanks. This was Thanks. Fun.